This video is a guide on how to use the Carl Stores Neo Video Integration System. For immediate telephone technical support, please call 1-800-421-0837 and select option 2. In addition, you can skip ahead to a specific section by clicking below on the appropriate timestamp for the segment you wish to view. Hi, I'm Scott Wingard, the OR1 sales engineer for Carl Schwartz, and today we're going to go over a little bit of the integration systems at Bascom Palmer Eye Institute. I'm going to cover the logic of the touch panels as well as the image capture devices in each one of the rooms in detail. Okay, so at the start of each day, um, the system's going to be asleep, and the way to activate or wake the system up is on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a blue power button. You press that. That is going to activate the touch panel display. Once the touch panel display is activated, we're going to select a video source that we want to view on one of our displays. In this case, in my camera, and I'm going to route that to display one and wall display two. That is going to activate both of the wall displays and now you're ready for your video routing and, and general operation. At the end of the day, it's very important to power down both the displays and the touch panel in order to maximize the operational life expectancy. It's a two-step process. The first step is to power down the displays by pressing and holding the display tab for two seconds and it's asleep, press and hold the display tab for two seconds, that display is asleep, and then at the bottom right hand corner, press the blue button for the touch panel, which puts the touch panel to sleep as well. Now the entire system is in rest mode. This is very important because the wall displays are LED displays. They have roughly 18 to 20,000 hours life expectancy when they're on. So by turning them off overnight, that's going to extend the life of display significantly. Okay, so now we're going to speak to the, the, the logic of the graphic user interface on the touch panel itself. The touch panel is aligned on the right with our video sources. We have different sources we can select. In the middle is our preview screen, and on the right-hand side is our destinations. So for example, if I press PAX PC, I'm going to get a preview of the PAX PC, and then I'm going to choose which display I want to send that image to, and it will route that image. Uh, very much like if I wanted to look at my in-light camera source, I would select that, the image of my in-light camera source would come up, and I could route that. So very simple, touch, preview, and select destination for the image routing on the touch panel display. So in this section we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about the video inputs along the left side of the screen. On the top we have a microscope. In this room the microscope is actually plugged into an HD SDI wall plate, but it is always plugged in there so we have labeled it microscope. Video source number two is the in-light camera. That is the camera that's in the surgical light. Input source number three is your image capture. This gives you a preview of what you're seeing on the IETA over at the touch panel. The fourth video source is the PAX PC. So we can take a source from the, from the PC in this room and send that to any one of the displays. We have a four-in-one plate that has an S-video a VGA, a composite, as well as a DVI input to plug mobile devices in to route video from. And we also have an HD SDI door plate that is located by the main door in each operating room. Again, that is for portable devices that have an output of HD SDI like many of the microscopes in the department. Okay, in this section, we're going to take a closer look at the outputs in each one of the rooms. In the outputs, those are the destinations or the tabs on the right hand of the preview screen. On the top, you'll see display one or procedural display. That is the display that is above the AIDA image capture device by the main doorway in each OR. Below that, we'll see display two. Display two is on the wall opposite of display one. The AIDA HD Connect is our recording device, which is located below display one. And it's very important when you're recording to select whatever video source you want to record, get a preview of it, 
and route it to the AIDA to be able to capture that video source. And then the last destination that we have is the SC node, that stands for Stream Connect node, that is for live streaming. And very much like the AIDA HD Connect, you would select what video source that you want to live stream, select it, get a preview, and route it to the SC node for live streaming. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the picture and picture functionality. The way we act activate that, it is display specific. So I've got a picture and picture tab for display one as well as display two. And the way we use that, if I select picture and picture, for example, in display two, along the bottom of the preview screen, I'm going to get a number of different formats showing my primary source and my secondary source. For this example, I'm going to select side by side. Below, I have my main source and my picture-in-picture -picture source. The way we select those, main source I'll select as PAX PC. For my secondary source, I'm going to select in-light camera and press it to secondary source that will give me a side-by-side -side view. And then I check out OK. And on display 2, I am now routing picture-in-picture. -picture. So at the front in the nurse charge area, there's a large display that has a view of all 10 operating rooms. On that display, the view that's going to be seen is whatever source I'm selecting in the room that is routed to display one, which we consider the procedural display. Now we're going to talk a little bit about managing audio for music in the room. In each operating room, there is an MP3 cable that is located directly below display one next to the AIDA HD image capture device. Um, you can plug a phone or device into that and listen to audio through the integration system. And the way we manage the audio, it's a two-step process. On the top right, I have a microphone. On that microphone, it shows MP3. Be certain that that MP3 is not muted. And then you also have volume control for your MP3. Right next to that, there is a button for the speaker. We have to make sure master volume control and output one are off mute. And then we'll be able to listen to music. A troubleshooting for that, again, if you plug your device in, you do not hear audio, go ahead and repeat the steps that I just went through and that should help you troubleshoot and get the audio running through the ceiling speakers in each operating room. Now we're gonna talk about the AIDA HD Connect image capture device. In each room, there is a detailed laminated cheat sheet that goes through each one of the steps that I'm going to talk about momentarily. So the first step to our image capture is first selecting the patient type. When we select this button, you're going to see a number of um, areas where we can enter different patient information, patient name, date of birth, etc. There are three areas that are highlighted in yellow that must be filled in in order to complete the procedure. First of which is surgeon. If you tap the arrow, you'll get a drop down. The next is surgical specialty. Again, you'll get a drop down and can select. And then the procedure type. So we'll go ahead and we'll type in the procedure type. We will click OK. And now we're ready to move on to capture. Step two in image capture is to select the capture tab. When I select the Capture tab, if you will remember, over at the Integration Touch Panel, I have selected the in-light camera source to be routed to the AIDA HD Connect, and now I'm getting a preview of that source on the HD Connect itself. In order to take still pictures, I hit the picture of the camera, and you'll notice a thumbnail on the right-hand side telling me that I took that picture. You can also take video clips by hitting the video camera, and then you will notice that the video camera icon is orange and my video is being taken place over here. If I want to end that video clip, I simply hit the camera again and that is how we record images and video clips in the capture section. The next section is our review section. So if I press this icon, now I can see the images and video clips that I've taken in this case and there are a number of things I can do with them. I can either select on a video file, it will load that file, 
and you'll notice it'll start playing that file. If there's an instance in the video clip that I want a snapshot of, I can do that from the image capture device as well. And from here, I can also delete files from this case, removing them from that instance. The last step in image capture is finishing the case. So now that I've completed my case, I press finish case and I have a series of questions asked me what I want to do. I have the option of copying the procedure to an external media. If I had a USB drive or a DVD disc in either one of these two slots, one of those two areas would be illuminated and I could select that to export to a portable media. My next option is create a new procedure. That simply takes me back to a fresh screen where I can enter new patient information and start a new procedure. So now I'm going to talk about reviewing the history in previous cases. We're able to access those cases, review them, and delete them from the hard drive on the image capture device. By pressing the file cabinet on the top right hand corner, I am going to get all the cases that are stored on this device. If I select a case to view, it's going to pull up all the image and video clips associated with that case and now I can view them or I can delete them and get them off the hard drive. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about this space where we're housing the AIDA HD Connect and the, uh, the Berktold Striker inlight camera box and the MP3 plug for music and the integration. Uh, notice the area is very, very um, open. It's very important that the AIDA HD Connect has proper ventilation as to not overheat, which means it is, it is critical that um, items are not left on top or beside because, again, it can overheat the system. There is also an antenna for your wireless in-light camera that can be disturbed, and so it's very important to keep this area clear.